uh, welcome to my drum studio. My name is Brian Cullen and uh, today I'd just like to show you uh, my technique and uh, idea of holding the drumsticks and, and playing the drum. Now, when I was younger I never was actually shown any official uh, way of holding the sticks and playing the drum. I was brought up playing lots of rudiments and uh, learned to play basic rhythms, but never officially, you know, how you hold the sticks and hit the drum. It was never seemed to come up into the, the uh, conversation of the lesson. So uh, perhaps I wasn't too bad at the time for that not to happen, but so all I know is, is that I did adapt when I first started the very wrong way of holding the sticks, which was first and get the lesson and just hold them, which is a natural thing to do, I suppose, like that, gritting my teeth and trying to play with my arms as fast as I could, going blue and wondering why this was such hard work and I couldn't get very fast. Um, I think when you're younger, you, you think that the whole idea of playing drums is to play as fast as you possibly can. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but uh, it always seems to be the way with all of us, doesn't it? Um, so but obviously as you get older and more mature, you, you start to you know, do away with those little things and start thinking about music and, and technique of adapting to the music. So, when I um, thought about this eventually with the sticking, I thought, well, you know, surely there's an easier way of doing this. And as I say, I'm not having any formal teaching of this, so I, wasn't, you know, I had to make my own minds up about how this was going to work. So, uh, what I found was, is that it became common sense really, um, is that if I allow the stick to bounce on the drum, rather than try and stab the drum, um, life's going to be a little bit easier for me. So, when my students come along for lessons now, I always make a big thing of getting them to hold the sticks properly, play the drum properly. Um, obviously they'll develop their own little twists on this as they go along, but if they've got a good starting point, then uh, you know, they, they stand a chance. Um, so, what I always tell them to do is first of all is how they hold the drumsticks. Now, obviously you don't want to grip your drumsticks like that because you know, you know, they can't go anywhere. You're relying on your arm to do everything. So, what I came up with for my own, myself at the very beginning was that if you just hold your drumstick in your thumb and your forefinger like that, between your, you know, between in the sticks in the crack of the forefinger and the thumbs over the top like that. Okay, we got that. Okay, so, now... If you allow the stick to just move in your fingers like this, right? As you can see, the stick is moving. I'm talking to you. My arm's not moving. I'm not going anywhere. I can breathe, talk, do anything, uh, and the stick is moving. Okay, so that's how we, we, we stand a chance. So there we go. The stick's moving. Now, what I do next is come to the drum. Now, if you think of the drum uh, as a football, uh, a, a surface that you would bounce a football on, or a basketball, or something like that. If you get your hand and you get a ball and you bounce it off the ground and you just return it with your hand like this. You're basically doing the same principle with your thumb or forefinger with the stick off the drum. All we're doing is returning it. Okay, so you notice that I'm moving the stick between my thumb and my forefinger, so I'm rolling the forefinger over the thumb, like that. Okay, and when I turn it around onto the drum, I just very lightly and very loosely let the stick bounce, and then I start returning it with that, with that technique. All right, it'll take a couple of little fiddly starts, but to us, you've got the idea, you, 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 you'll get it. Okay, and then just start off slowly. Speed is not what we're looking for here. Once you've mastered the thing, then you can adapt it to whatever you want. But uh, for now, we just want to be nice and slow. Now, so this is how that would come off. Okay, I'm not forcing anything. I'm just letting the stick bounce, and I'm just returning it with that motion in my fingers. Now... We can make a little, couple of little adjustments here on the snare drum and on our stick to even enhance this even more. Now we're all different and um, you know, all our hands are different shapes and sizes and as you can see I didn't win Slimmer of the Year this year uh, but hopefully, hopefully next year. Um, so my hand is um, a little bit bigger, perhaps a little bit dumpier than some others, so fine. And what we find is, is that where you hold the stick will vary just slightly, not much in it but there will, there will be a slight difference. So the, to find that point what we do is is that I lay the stick on the drum. Uh, ideally, at the moment, I'm sticking to the edge of the drum, and the reason for that is, is that, in actual fact, there's more bounce near the edge of the drum than there is the centre of the drum. Uh, that's because we have the, the whole give of the head, the expanse of the head, so you will find there'll be less give in the middle, um, uh, more give in the middle, so there's less bounce, uh, and on the edge, it's a, it's a little bit tighter. Now, I, I tune my drums uh, a bit more of the traditional older sound, I suppose, they're more tighter, uh, more sharper sounding, where if you use a more deeper drum, lower tuning, um, you will find there will be a lot less bounce in the middle. So we, let's head towards the edge because you'll find that it will help here. And also, 
I find that when you play different styles of music, whether it be jazz, funk, whatever, you know, um, and you want to do more than just an offbeat on the snare drum, you know, playing near the edge, you can still maintain a little bit, quite a bit of volume, and it will help you do this technique because of the bounce, okay? And then of course you're returning it with a stick. So, like this. Okay, so what I've done there, I'm holding it in my, my crack of my forefinger, and I've gone to the edge of the drum, or just within about two or three inches there, and I'm dropping the stick on the drum. See it bounces. Now, obviously, this is uh, this would be a bit common sense, I'm sure, to most of you. But if you come near the end of the stick like this with your finger, and I pick the stick up, this is what will happen. Blah, dead, no bounce. So the more we come to the middle of the stick, the more bounce will come about, and that's where we all vary. So it's you want to find your point where it's best for you. So after you've sat there, relaxed a little bit, fiddled around with it. Say, for instance, this is what. Yeah, that's 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 the, your best point for you. Then just put your thumb back and just lightly pinch it. We're still holding it the same, but we've found the best balancing point for your stick. We've got a technique of just rolling your thumb finger to move the stick, and we've found the best bounce point on the snare drum. So all those things are going to help us to to work out. So let's put that all together. So now I can just drop the stick and then start to return it with my finger rolling over my thumb from the bottom. Okay, now this will take a little bit of a fiddle to start with, but once you've got the idea, it will just work itself out. So, Okay, I'm bouncing the stick, I'm not forcing it, it's doing most of the work itself for me, I'm just returning it. Now one my very important thing is, is to make sure that you take loads of deep breaths Get lots of air around your system when you play. If uh, some people, if they if they stop breathing, they get like this. As you can see, the motion alone shows you that your muscles are mentally tall. So you don't want that. You want to relax the whole time. So get lots. Make sure you've always got loads of air going around you. Lots of deep breaths, um, and stay relaxed and, and don't fight it. And then eventually, you can mould this into your own style of playing. You know whatever you do. Now I adapt this technique to both hands, even though this is under the shoulder. You know, the same would apply to my left hand as well as my right hand, uh, and if you're playing match grip. Um, if you're playing a larger kit with more toms, naturally the match grip here is, is a far easier way of getting around a larger kit. Um, if you play a smaller conventional kit, I do a lot of sort of jazz things, so I, I, I do a lot of bebop type style playing, so we're talking about rise cymbal, top floor. So that motion like this, um, is a great way for me to play. So, but if I was holding the stick like this, I'm going to be uncomfortably manoeuvring like this. So, I find that the older style of technique is is ideal for that. And anyway, the history has, has, has dictated that, hasn't it? Because, you know, we've come from say a military background. They adapted it to a traps kit. Then came in the swing era. They still stuck to the style of playing. Drum kits evolved with it. So. It makes sense that that's why that's the one that works out, um, but uh, that's a, that's another another subject, obviously. But I tend to play like this a lot. Now the same with this. I was never formally um, shown how to play like this. I used to watch my my heroes that I was brought up with, um, though um, I'm not as old as I look. Um, but uh, I used to listen to obviously Buddy Rich, Joe Morello, and people like that who had phenomenal techniques in this style of playing um, on a rudimental basis. You know absolute masters, and adapted it to the drum kit. So um, I used to copy them, I used to hold my hand like this, but once again I used to sit and play, you know, <laughs> wonder, wonder why this didn't exactly work, you know, once again I was gripping it, and just copying the picture but gripping it, and just sort of thinking about my wrist. But once I thought of this, in the same way I just told you about this, is that I just let the stick move, look, I mean, if that's wrong, it's wrong, what, what, what does it matter? The stick's moving, if it bounces off the head, great. So that's the first attitude, so with the left hand, so, but if you notice, it's a natural thing for my thumb to want to push the stick back, so the thumb's doing that. And what you'll find is that eventually you're messing around, you start using your thumb, you start using your finger, and eventually it becomes, in a funny way, a natural, you, you, the hand sorts itself out. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't check out people that have got things online describing how to play techniques like this. You should check everything out as far as anybody's concerned of playing because there's something to learn from everybody and everybody comes up with something new or a twist or whatever and that's uh, what makes this all fun. 
So do that, whatever. But I'm just putting this across as how I came as a novice wanting to play like this with no no one telling me how. So and also it's only recently we've had this. T we've been lucky enough to have this technology of so much information. You know, even in my short lifetime, um, you know, this is you know I didn't have that. You know, when I was in my teens and that, I couldn't get on the internet and see someone do that. And most of the drum tutors around in those days were from the dance band period that were being brought up from even older, less knowledge styles that, have, uh, that we've now got uh, progressed and um, um, and have been improved on and all sorts of things. So um, um, I had to do it myself in lots of ways. So anyway, so this this left hand here uh, will will develop. So if you fancy ever trying that, just think of it in the same way. You know, just let the stick move like that. Let it bounce. Find your best point here. Let it bounce back with your thumb like a football. You try it using your finger, even though it might feel a bit strange. And just mess around with it and keep on and keep on and you'll find that this will develop into some form of natural technique. And if you watch people like Joe Reno and Buddy Rich Lou Belson closely with the left hand, they've all got their own slight little twist on that. Even though it's, it, you know, it becomes a, uh, the same principle, but... You know, they've all got their own slight, you know, some are slightly more art than that, some are more flatter than that, you know, some tend to use their thumb more, um, you know, um, you know, watch your buddy, for instance, you know, he, he, you'll, you'll quite often see the thumb quite often in the air here, where he's actually got the finger technique down more than the thumb technique, but then f you'll find that you'll get more volume from the thumb, because you can snap the head than you will the finger, so it's all little things like that. We could do a, a, a big uh, um, video, and um, there are videos, I'm sure, on this alone, so we won't go too far, but I'm just saying that both hands for what I've originally shown you, um, and if you did wonder about this, then mess around with it on those lines. Um, I hope this has helped you, um, and it's a little bit informative for those of you that uh, are new to this. Um, don't forget to check out my website, grahamcullum.com, and um, I wish you a happy drumming.